Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to um, our talk about community outreach. Um, this talk will be focusing a lot on the work that we do within the Office of Marketing and Publicity. So to that end, um, my name is Brian Prophet. Um, I am the Vice President of Marketing and Publicity for Apache. I am also currently the Vice President of Conferences um, for um, that same organization. Um, this talk was kind of the result of some new work that we're doing out of the Marketing and Publicity Office. Um, I'll explain a little bit more about what we, what we do, but the idea here is to um, let individual um, uh, Apache projects know what they can do uh, to get services out of us. And then any, for those of you who may not be a part of an Apache project, this information should still be useful to you because you will be able to uh, apply some of these uh, procedures and processes to your own project, hopefully. So let's see, let's see if I, nope. Technology is awesome. Uh, we may have a problem here. Hold on a sec. Hold on. Sorry. Great. Super excited. <laughs> All right. Okay, so why do we even do, thank you, um, why do we even do community marketing and advocacy? Okay, what is this for? So it's funny because I was just having a conversation with some people out at lunch today about the differences between the way North Americans approach um, self-promotion and promotion in general versus versus um, how um, Europeans and, and people from Latin America approach that. Um, Americans tend to be hyper uh, promoting of what they're working on and what they're doing in the office um, and with their lives. And generally other countries are not so much. And there are obviously exceptions to that. Um, but in open source, community and marketing is gonna be really important if only because of this number. This is currently as of, um, let's see, September of 2023, that's the number of active public GitHub repos that were out. So you've got one project. There's 372 million on you know, GitHub alone that are competing with eyeballs and attention and resources. You've got to, you know, there's a lot out there um, to, you know, fight against to get that kind of attention. Um, and so, and even within the Apache um, Foundation, we have close to 300 different active projects at any given time. The number varies, um, but 300 is a good ballpark number, you know. And trying to get help and attention for your project, even inside of the, the ecosystem of the Apache Foundation, can be kind of difficult. So what we're going to talk about today is um, some basics around messaging 101, um, some marketing approaches that you can use in your community, and then for those of you who are in the Apache Foundation or are working with one of the projects, We'll dive in a little bit into how the Office of Marketing and Publicity can help you. Um, contrary to popular belief, I am a helpful person. So, um, so I know that throws a lot of people off, but, um, but we really want to make this um, a, a service for everybody. All right, so let's talk about messaging. Messaging at the end of the day is storytelling. I can tell you some story. I can tell you some stories, right now, 
And, and, and there are ways of doing that. For instance, I could say, and this would be true, that once upon a time, I spent a weekend in jail and I won two cartons of cigarettes playing poker with my fellow inmates. That is, hand to God, a true story. <laughs> I will tell you the actual rest of the story later because I have a whole thing to get through here. But I've just teased you because now you're like, okay, we've got maybe a convicted felon up on stage, you know, and so he can run for president, but that's about it. <laughs> Not a convicted felon, that's part of the story. Anyway, um, so when you're doing storytelling, there are ways of doing it. I just did the whole, whoo, let's tease this out and go, right? But the basics are still very clear no matter what kind of approach you use, straightforward or splashy like I just did. So you gotta figure out, okay, when I'm talking about messaging, what does my community need? And you probably already read the slide, but are you looking to get more users? Are you looking to answer questions for users? That's a, usually a pretty big one. Are you looking for new committers and contributors? Um, and as always, I always put that caveat in there, committers are not always coders. You can have people come into your community with writing backgrounds and design backgrounds and event planning backgrounds. These are things that are valuable to community just as much as a developer. Um, in, in Apache land, you might be looking for actual more PMC members. So, the, you know, that's the equivalent of a maintainer, typically, in another open source project. What are your goals? Because that's going to be how you define your messaging. You don't want to just try for all of these. You should maybe be picking one or two of these. Focus on that for a while. And by a while, I'm talking about maybe at least a quarter of the year, usually half a year, before you're going to get results. Marketing and publicity is not necessarily fast. In fact, you don't want it to be fast. If it's fast, that usually means something's gone horribly wrong, and you have to explain it. And now you're getting calls from reporters every five minutes. That is not a good day. That is when marketing and publicity is fast. On a good day, you're telling stories at your pace and getting the message out. So after you've done the goals, okay, figure out how to start with your message. Why is your project unique? Why would someone want to contribute to it? And it should be tied into those goals. Um, fundamentally, community marketing is about really explaining what your project does, why it's beneficial, why you would want to use it, and then how to get started using it. For those of you who have maybe heard my talk earlier this week, um, and I mentioned the concept of onboarding, it's no coincidence that those three tenants here also match the, the tenets of onboarding. When you want people to join your community, you want to tell them what the project is, where to get it, how to use it, and then how to contribute to it. Okay, same thing here, just slightly worded differently. Okay, and this breaks it down in a little bit more of a tabular form. These slides, by the way, will be made available um, um, on either the conference website or I'll make sure they get sent out. Um, so when we work at MMP, we, we take care of a lot of this. So what does your project do? Okay, MMP explains what the foundation provides and what, you know, its project do through our own marketing and publicity services. And this is a relatively new thing. Up until recently, marketing and publicity in, in Apache really just focused on being the face of the foundation. So if a reporter had a question about something the foundation was doing, they would come to us and we would answer. We still do that, but now we're doing more. Who is it for? Um, we take care of messaging for all the board directors, the officers, and members and then all of the top level projects and incubating pro projects. That second line is, uh, as I said, a little bit new. Now granted, a lot of projects have their own corporate sponsors and participants, and they have their own marketing teams, and they are certainly welcome to go out and do their own marketing, um, but we can also coordinate with them and, and build branding that at least, or I'm sorry, build messaging 
that at least doesn't conflict with them. Why do we want to use MMP? Well, we're in the business, our whole job is to make the foundation look good. Um, as Rich said in his talk um, earlier, for those of you who are there, this isn't about lying. I'll tell you the truth about the foundation. But I'm not going to go out of my way to tell you the parts that I don't necessarily think are awesome. You know, because we're all human beings. Human beings are not perfect. Mistakes get made. Okay, so you want to always emphasize the positive in your messaging. Um, we also talk about how we compare with other foundations and other organizations like us. And then um, finally, we talk about our community values and culture. So that's how we and MMP approach those messaging uh, basics um, as we craft um, the things that we're talking about. Some of that is reactive and some of that is proactive. Okay, so other best practices. Please know your audience. If you're talking to developers, get technical with them. If you're talking to non-developers, do not get technical with them at all. We're, um, as for those of you who went to Dirk's keynote, Earlier um, today, we are getting, like many other foundations, involved with regulatory conversations with people. Um, I'm not going to talk to a government official about how GitHub works, even if they really want to know. That's not that's not really something I want to share. You know, talk to them about. I'll give them a book or point them to a website. That's not our job. Our job is to say, okay, here's how we're going to work with government regulations once we figure that out. Consider your industry context. Don't just write about technical features. That is a very nice professional way of saying, please don't be boring, okay? We know, we, we know you love your software. You built it. You put time in it. You put in, in, energy into it. I get it, okay? But not everybody's going to care that you, you know, change the you know, um, UX framework for your project unless it is a really big change and has a lot of improvement. You want to be judicious about talking about features. Show how you are better, not how your competitors suck. Okay, we have a rule in Apache, and we also have this rule in Red Hat. Don't talk smack about your competitors, ever. Even if they're going out in the press and saying bad things about you, and this, that's, that happens, and it gets hard not to respond and say, oh yeah, well your mom, blah, 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 right? That's what you're gonna do. You really wanna do that, don't do that. It does two things wrong for you. One, it, put, it paints you in a negative light automatically. When you respond with the negative, people will say, well, they clearly, have some issues. And the other thing is, it's like uh, the old saying, if you, you know, start wrestling with the pigs, you're going to get dirty. Okay? Don't do that. There's no need to do it. Talk about your positives, not other people's negatives. Um, and again, as I alluded to earlier, accentuate the positive based on facts. Don't exaggerate. I've got the greatest software in the world. No, you don't. You don't. It's okay. You've got great software that really works well doing this particular thing. Talk about that. Don't exaggerate. Um, don't use vanity metrics, GitHub stars, lines of codes, how many downloads. Those are all things that really don't matter to how good your project is. I make this point in a similar talk when I talk about community metrics where I say, you know, Firefox has tens and hundreds of millions of downloads every well, hour or whatever their download rate is. But that doesn't necessarily mean the project is healthy. That could mean that, yes, a lot of people are using their software, but we don't know what's going on behind the scenes. Um, and that's why vanity metrics are dangerous um, to like tout about. Plus, they can also be gamed. True story. Um, when Red Hat started working in OpenStack, when, when that's, that technology got going about eight or nine years ago, we, our marketing team made a colossal, 
colossal mistake, and they said, we were the number one contributor to OpenStack, which we were. It wasn't a lie, we were. One month later, Hewlett Packard came along and dumped a whole bunch of tiny little contrib contributions, like bug fixes, typo fixes, everything, and they completely swamped it. They gained that system, and they became the number one um, contributor. And we learned a valuable lesson. Don't brag too much, okay? Especially about metrics, because metrics can be gained. Um, right for a global audience, don't use idioms or language that might be confusing the non-native English speakers. And those of you who know me know that this is probably the hardest thing that I ever do. Because I am from the American Midwest, and the all shucks, how y'all doing charm thing is a hard thing to turn off. You know, and I, I lapse into idiom in my writing and in my uh, speech quite a bit. So you want to avoid doing that. And then uh, down below is um, some of the, uh, a variant of the, the part about accentuating the positive. Instead of saying alpha is better than beta because of blah, 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 you say alpha enables a frictionless dev experience, start, build, and run your app in less than 60 seconds with one line of code. And yeah, that sounds very markety. Guess what? I'm the marketing guy. Um, but that's true. We've said a positive thing. We haven't talked about our competitors at all. We don't even mention them. And we talk about some factual things. And yeah, it's kind of couched in nice, you know, touchy-feely language, but it gets the job done. All right, <clears throat> strategies around marketing. There are the basics. You need a solid brand. We have community, well, I don't know, wearing that t-shirt. He's wearing that t-shirt in the back. Community over code. Nice brand, we like it. We like the name, we like the brand. We got the website for the, the event. Great website, well done, put together, y'all did great, by the way. Um, and, you know, for a project, I've already mentioned this, onboarding, those are key things. That's part of marketing. Onboarding is one of those things that says, well, yeah, but that's really a technology thing. Eh. But in open source, they overlap. You're, you're, you know, the difference between a marketing person in your community and a developer or committer in your community is not very great. There, these things are going to overlap. You're probably going to want a social media presence, although right now that is a very mind-field-ridden uh, 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 ecosystem. Twitter is still good because Twitter has a lot of eyeballs, but you may or may not believe in some of the messaging that's on Twitter right now. So you have to make a choice. Do I go to something alternative like Threads or Blue Sky or one of the Mastodon instances? If that's what you want to do, then you have to commit to that. But it is not, it is still unfortunately hard to deny that Twitter or X or whatever you want to call it today has a lot of traffic. Um, there are alternatives, and if you want to get into that, we can talk about that later. And also, having good content. Talk about what your project does. Talk about how it functions. Another, um, also another way, uh, suggestion that I make to projects is talk about the, like, the ecosystem that you're working in. When I was running um, a community for Red Hat called Overt, and it's a virtualization platform, on the social media channels, I would link to articles about advances in virtualization, even if they were coming from our so-called competitors. The idea there is we wanted to project sincerely that we were thought leaders in the virtualization space. And whether we made it or somebody else made it, like if VMware came out with something really cool, we would say, hey, this is actually kind of cool and something to look for in the virtualization space. It did two things. One, it, it said that we we're going to be fair and honest players in this industry. And then also, too, a little bit um, more cynically, it gave a signal that we are working on that, too, or we would be working on that. So it gave a little signal to our users that, okay, yeah, VMware has this now, but if we're talking about it, then probably we're gonna have it soon. Advanced things, 
events. That's a huge part of marketing and publicity, but it is, as the organizers in the room will tell you, a very complicated and um, expensive in terms of money and human resources thing to do. But they are valuable. Having people face to face, something that we learned very quickly after COVID happened, is a very valuable thing. We are human beings, we are social animals. This kind of interaction, or more importantly, what's going on in the hallway is invaluable. And you might wanna think about um, uh, diverting time and energy and money to that. Research and surveys, not always as common. Um, research and surveys kind of go up and down in terms of popularity, so you don't see a lot of them anymore. Um, they tend to be a little bit dry um, and sometimes not as useful um, to talk about as you might think, but they can work if you do them correctly. Campaigns um, are a big part, and this is actually something that we're doing in Apache's m &P. We have a public good campaign that we've just launched. We've been running for the last year something called First Contributions, and you may see that on our social media on LinkedIn and Twitter, where we've talked to people in Apache at various levels of experience, whether they're brand new or they've been around forever, and we just asked a simple question. What was your first contribution to open source? What was your first contribution to Apache? Sometimes it's the same answer, not always. And we talk about that. What, and people are really interested in this, and we get a lot of engagement on this campaign. What makes it exciting for you? Because I guarantee a lot of you have vastly different stories about how you got started with open source. And people actually want to know that. Because especially if they're thinking about it, if they're right on the edge and they're thinking, I'd like to contribute to a project, maybe they hear something similar that resonates with them. And then finally, public relations, which is basically um, dealing with the press. That is actually a dying field right now. N uh, not necessarily the press, but in, in general, but in technology, there are far fewer tech publications out there, especially in North America. I think the market is a little bit healthier here in Europe. It's certainly healthier in Asia. Um, but in North America and a little bit even in Latin America, the days of the technology journalists, of which I used to be one way back in the day, there are fewer and fewer of us. And so we don't do a lot of conversations with the press. I think this year alone, I've had four conversations with actual reporters. Now again, if there's a crisis that's brewing, that will change. But on a normal given time, there's not a lot of press activity. And by the way, three of those reporters were from Europe. Um, not North America. Okay, let's see. Um, I'm not going to go too over to, too much over this because time and also you can read. Um, basics of brand, make sure you've got a solid uh, lo logo. Um, and for Apache, we share that. We share all of our logos in one place so we can make sure everything's compliant with policy, our trademark policy. Um, make sure that you have graphics in place. And by that, you've noticed that we have a pretty common theme, like community over code. The color palette matches what we have for Apache's uh, current logo. Um, and the community over code EU is a variation on that. We stay in the same color palette, the purples, the yellows, the reds. That's deliberate. We're, even though we have separate events and these are separate things, We've got cohesiveness around our brand. The website, <laughs> that is probably your most important and also least expensive way to do outreach. Don't just slap a website together and you know never work on it again. You wanna make sure that that website is accessible. You wanna make sure that you use color correctly um, for um, all the things for accessibility, but also for content, you want to make sure that there is a one-stop shop for your project where people can go and say, hey, what is this project about? And even if that's a README um, uh, page on your GitHub repository, fine, but still do it. 
there needs to be a place for people to land to learn about your project. And the website is actually the number one place to do that. Onboarding, I already kind of went over this. How do you get it? How do you use it? How do you contribute? And then the other one for marketing and publicity is how to communicate. You want to make sure that your lines of communication are always there and open. It's going to vary from project to project. Older projects use mailing lists, and that's still very prevalent in Apache land. Newer projects use Slack or Discord. Um, I've seen some projects where all of the conversations happen in GitHub comments. Okay. Um, it, there's no right or wrong answer. I didn't put IRC up here, and I know I make jokes about IRC, but some projects still do that, and, you know, there but for the grace of God. Um, but it's okay. It doesn't matter. You can be using smoke signals for all I care as long as your community is talking to each other. And you make sure that outsiders know where to go. Because there's nothing worse than somebody making a comment somewhere about your project and you say, well, you need to say something about that on the mailing list and then nobody knows where the mailing lists are. Or Slack or GitHub or whatever you're using. Social media. Um, I can make these available to anybody in Apache and honestly outside of Apache. We have guidelines on our public wiki page that talk about um, <coughs> um, what you should be doing around social media, talking about what we do around social media for projects when they have a major release. I've already mentioned the first cont uh, contribution campaign. Um, if you are an Apache project, this is something that we can offer you from MMP. If you are not, these are things that you might want to consider doing um, around campaigns. Maybe you have a major milestone coming up or you actually have your event. Um, campaigns can help you do things around that. Um, and just basically, it doesn't have to be long. The first contribution campaign is in its almost at its end of its first year. Probably going to do it for at least another six months while we ramp up the public good campaign. And then we'll kind of phase that one out and phase the other one in. Um, but you can decide. It could be a couple months. It could be a quarter. It could be a year. Whatever you want to do. Content. This one's hard. Um, blogs are still kind of the way to do long form content. Um, but they are also, I, I kind of debated this a little bit because not a lot of people are writing blogs and not a lot of people are reading blogs. You might want to consider doing a long form social media like, um, get, and a lot of people are doing this now, posting something big on LinkedIn. Um, people are using LinkedIn as a content sharing platform more and more, and you can probably kind of skip the whole blog thing and post things on LinkedIn. <laughs> that has the advantage of being instantly shareable. And I'm not getting paid by LinkedIn to tell you this. Um, you could also do this with Facebook, but that's also the place where your grandma and grandpa are. So it's probably, well, my mom's there, so probably not going to be awesome, the place. But LinkedIn right now is probably the best technology business uh, oriented platform to share long form content. Um, Medium is there, but sometimes Medium um, needs um, subscriptions depending on which way you go. So um, I think LinkedIn's pretty frictionless. At ba bylines, uh, bylines are when you write a story, you get it out into a media publication. This is very rare. Remember when I said that there weren't a lot of reporters out there? There are not a lot of publications out there either, and not a lot of them are going to be taking bylines any, anymore. But every once in a while, you can get the opportunity, and somebody, if, if it comes along and somebody says, hey, you seem like you really know about this part of this technology, could you write something for us? By all means, jump on it. And there are some outlets there. The new stack, DZone, Dev2, and Hacker Noon are, are all um, pretty solid. Probably not going to get paid for this, so it's still going to be like volunteer writing, but there you go. And then you can use MMP services, and we can actually help you make um, blogs um, on uh, blog articles on news.apache.org, which is our main blogging site. Events, talked about this already. 
Um, those are advanced. They don't have to be huge like this or our community over code NA. They can be meetups. They can be virtual. You can just have office hours. But any time, any opportunity you can to get people together in some kind of face-to-face -face, um, would be great. Um, you can, and yeah, you can also, if you're a larger project, you can also host your own event as well. We can also help with conference submissions. Conferences, coming to a conference and talking about what your project, that's fairly low-hanging fruit in terms of complexity. It's easy. I want to talk about my project. My project is awesome because of this. But then, you know, that part's easy. It's the getting there part that's hard, right? Because now you got to figure out, okay, how am I going to get there? How am I going to pay for this? And things like that. So um, we put that in the advanced column only because of the actual execution part. Community surveys, I mentioned this before. This is a very advanced strategy. Um, um, you have to be careful about this. You don't want to ask every question ever imaginable, but figure out like what features do people work like do they want what works well is it easy for people to come on board i love that question i'm a big onboarding fan if you haven't been able to tell um how are they using their project sometimes you'll get a surprise you'll say oh people in this industry are using my project really well maybe we should start focusing on features for them i usually tell projects they should do a survey no more than once a year and really once every two years any, anything closer, you're not going to get significantly different, different results. And, and honestly, surveys are, they're not that easy to do. So I would say every one to two years for those. Public relations, working with PR, the old fashioned way, issue press releases for uh, milestones and groundbreaking news, reach out to journalists for your milestone news. Things like that. Again, we don't do this very often at Apache. So this is a very advanced strategy just simply because there's not a lot out to do. I will tell you that, and this is not really a secret, there will be a logo change coming this year for Apache. And we are going to be reaching out to journalists about that. That is a major change to the Apache Foundation and there will be messaging around that about why we did it, and when we did it, and how we did it. So we'll be reaching out to reporters even before that news goes public to sort of get them inside and help tell our part of the story. They're certainly going to go talk to other people about their opinions, but at least we have the chance to get our, our messaging out first. Um, that's the kind of thing that you're going to do that. Um, if you do, if you are an Apache Foundation, if you do have crisis communications, which I've been kind of joking about, and I hope it never happens to you, definitely reach out to MMP. If you are not Apache related, you can still reach out to us. Um, we we are not obligated to help you, but in the spirit of open source collaboration, I don't mind throwing you some advice. You can take it or leave it. Um, And then we do a lot, and as I said before, we have a lot of these services out on our wiki, public wiki page on the marketing and publicity, uh, publicity part. When you do this, try to get help. Don't stick this all in one person. If somebody's good at writing and a few people, have them trade off writing responsibilities. If somebody's good at event management or planning, have them do that. Don't do it all yourself. It can't be done. Um, this is part of why MMP is helping um, <coughs> the Apache projects do this. This is a lot of work. Um, one, one idea that we do, uh, we, and we've seen in other projects, have a weekly gardener who, like, for one week, all they do is work with the community, whether it's messaging or anything else. And don't do anything else. No development, no nothing. Just do that. And then pass it on to the next gardener. That's a good way of spreading the workload. And that, I know I'm a little over time, I think, but um, that is it. My contact information is there, and um, where are we at on? Do I have time for questions, or are we done? <laughs>